at first glance, it sort of looks like a non-problem, doesn't it? Do you really need to go through this much trouble to dispense powdered soap? Ah, uh, yes. If you give me your time, I'll explain how this was made. I won't apologize for its design, even though it kind of seems somewhat frivolous. I'll explain to you what it is, how I made it, and why I would bother. It's a champagne bottle. A champagne bottle with a valve on it. Champagne bottles are rather attractive and they're nice and tough. Thick glass. So, it has a pretty rugged design. Tip proof, heavy, solid oak. The solid oak does seem a little bit over the top because it's kind of pricey material, but it just so happened in my case that I had some scrap pieces lying around the shop that I wasn't using for anything and it fit the purpose really well. The valve is a great feature. You can spin it to accommodate both left and right handed people and the cup centers in that little slot and it perfectly centers its deposit right inside the cup. After some practice you shouldn't even spill a grain also works from the center, or if you're left-handed. As I was prototyping, I cut a little dish in for the cup, but then I thought if I wanted to replace the cup, then it would be too difficult. So this way, you can just make a new insert if you choose to use a different cup. Also consider that if your collection cup is down inside the wood, it will make it farther away from this nozzle, and so a few more grains are likely to spill. Ideally, we want it as close as possible to the exit of the nozzle, but not so close that it makes it difficult to get it in and out. The way that the box is designed is really simple. I just use screws and then plug them. There's no point in using fancy joinery here. In fact, screws and plugs are over the top beautiful if you ask me. I think they resemble dowels. In all likelihood, this is the drill bit that I use more than any other. A 3 8 inch spade bit. And if you look closely at it, its profile matches that of a drywall screw. So it can automatically make a perfect countersink for a drywall screw. After that, you can cut a plug with a plug cutter, which is a really inexpensive tool for a drill. Better to use it with a drill press. Align the grain if you're a perfectionist. On the base of your flush trim saw, about a quarter of an inch back from its business end, you have some masking tape and that keeps it from scratching the things you care about. And the thickness of the tape means that after you've made your cut, your dowel is just proud enough that a super sharp chisel can cut the remainder away. And we do that with sort of crescent shaped swipes that are perpendicular to the wood grain. If you're using oak, if you're using something softer, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's quickly rattle off the dimensions here. It's 11 inches wide, 14 and a half tall, and its width is five and a half, but it sticks over an extra inch and a half in the front, giving it a total of seven inches. The height of this shelf will be totally determined by your specific champagne bottle. Mine happens to be, incidentally, nine inches to the top from the ground. But again, while you're constructing this, first you'll drill this hole in the top for your champagne bottle, which mine happens to have a diameter of three and a sixteenth, and it's placed an inch away from the front, which makes it an inch and three eighths away from the back. Its center of gravity is slightly to the front, and this toe kick in the front compensates for that. And so the whole cabinet can be assembled first before the shelf is fit to it. 
And so you want the champagne bottle to rest mostly on this and ever so slightly on this. This is sort of a pocket of two different sized holes that keeps the bottle from going all the way down. And there's an O-ring on here just to prevent side to side motion. It makes it nice and stable. Behind the valve, there's some white plastic cabinet liner, and that's just for visibility. It makes it a little brighter. In order to get your champagne bottle perfectly vertical, this large circle and this little circle need to align perfectly. And so while you're still in construction, before this shelf is permanently nailed in, or screwed rather, slide it all the way up and trace that circle onto it and that way you'll limit the likelihood of making a measuring error. From there, it's just a matter of making some straight cuts away from your hole out through the end of the board and then round it over. Make it so that it fits almost perfectly the piece of pipe. Okay, let's talk about the device itself. It consists of three parts, two of which are PVC electrical conduit. Half inch, schedule 40, the half inch refers to the inside diameter, but it's not always exactly half inch. But that doesn't matter. Go buy yourself a piece of half inch conduit and it will fit nicely with this half inch UPVC valve. This is a full port ball valve and they're not expensive at all. It's just a few dollars. Full port means that when it's open, the opening is the same diameter as the pipe itself. In other words, uh, some valves actually restrict flow because the opening will be smaller. You have to watch. So peek through when you're buying it and make sure it's the same size as a piece of pipe. You may have noticed while we were peeking through there that little plus inside. I'll get to that in just a moment. There's one more thing I need to tell you about the valve. Now this is a different kind of valve, but it's still a ball valve. And look down inside that Against the ball itself, there's a what appears to be some sort of nylon or something friction material that helps it to seal and keeps it from abrading prematurely. In order to make our valve open and close easily, you're going to need to get one of those out. Because if you don't, your valve will be sticky. It might wear over time, but just to speed up the process, try to take a needle tool or something and get it out. And only do this on one side of the valve. I did it on the bottom side and that's so that the top will still disallow grains of soap from getting jammed in there and then making the valve even stickier. Just to be clear, there are two of those grommet gasket things on a ball valve and I only took off the bottom one. And look how nice and easy it is to turn. What is that? Think about the way that a ball valve opens. If it's open just a little bit, then the orifice is to one side, and what it does is it causes the soap to shoot to one side. What it looks like as the soap is coming out is instead of the soap falling straight down, it kind of gets thrown to the side. That little plus is a simple mechanism that fixes the problem. Notice how the soap falls perfectly vertically. It doesn't naturally want to do that. You have to add the plus if you want to get it to do that. It's just scrap 12 gauge copper wire. If you drill a hole that's 5 fourths, copper wire fits into it perfectly snugly. Get it to be proud. Clip it off. And then gently file until it's perfectly smooth. If you don't want to scratch your plastic because you're detail crazy like I am, <laughs> wrap a piece of masking tape around it first and then file. Next, you'll put a second one perpendicular to the first, about a quarter of an inch away from the other. And the combination of the two will sort of randomize the grains of soap enough that the net result is they just tend to tumble vertically. You can barely see the little plus in there, but it's in this piece, which is an inch proud of the valve. 
and it's not glued in or anything, it's just friction fit. This top piece of conduit, or PVC, is a grand total of three inches in length, but an inch of that has been machined so that it can friction fit into the bottle. For many of you watching, this will be the challenging part, because if you don't have a machinist slave, it can be difficult to do something this precise. But, you could probably pull it off with a sander or maybe a drill press and a sharp chisel. I don't know. I can only help you solve problems so much. I'm here to get you to think, not to fix your problems for you. <laughs> but the point is, make a nice solid friction fit and it should last forever. A few more considerations. Powdered soap will clump. It absorbs moisture, it wants to do that, and when it does, it turns to a solid mass. That's why it's in a sealed container. If you leave a little bit in the cup overnight, it will turn to a cake. Of course, the humidity here in the shop has been pretty high over the last couple days, but the bottle, since it is in uh, a airtight device that's kind of designed for um, fluid plumbing. It's done pretty well. No caking at all. It flows like an hourglass. Now, why did I even want to do this in the first place? Well, because there are two different types of powdered soap. Let's call them blue and white. And Mrs. Pocket likes the properties of blue and white for different reasons, and so she mixes them at a three to one ratio, and that gives her the formulation that has the prop properties that she wants. And if you're not using powdered soap, well, then you ought to be, because liquid soap is just not economical. And when you have something like this, it makes it really easy. Also, there's sort of a tactile pleasure in using a gizmo. Mrs. Pocket referred to it as a piece of art, and I, I tend to agree in the least pretentious way possible. I do think that this is an over-the-top solution for a not that bad of a problem, but our hours get wasted away that way. I mean that we perform repetitive, little, tiny, few-second actions again and again and again, and the net unpleasantness adds up to a less qualitative life overall. Five loads a week, you're opening up a thing, mixing two things, and nah. Instead, five times a week, you twist this little knob and go about your day. <laughs> Let me know what you think. I do want you to think about it seriously, though. If you have a not-so-bad problem in your life, but that problem forces you to take a small corrective action against it frequently, over the course of life, over a long period of time, think about how much unpleasantness that adds up to. Squash the bug right away and make your life better. In the long run, it pays off.